Good morning and welcome to Live in a Greenhouse on YouTube. If you're new here, this channel is about my journey to design, build, and then live in the first greenhouse enclosed tiny home in the United States. I'm on an island in the northwest corner of the United States in the northwest corner of Washington State. Although last winter was colder than usual, see my video about our snow delay, winters are normally mild and our challenge for building in the winter is normally rain and mud. Last time, the carpenters, Mike and Nate, got the house's subfloor laid. This episode, they continue by framing up the walls. So stay tuned and see what it's like to build inside a greenhouse. In addition to marking the lines for where the walls go, Mike also marked out a template so the wall starts out square. Nate drilled holes into the foundation with tied down bolts. Mike called Matt, who's working at another site on the other side of the island, to double check questions on the framing. And Nate cut dozens of studs needed for this north wall. Lumber can have any number of defects. It may be cupped, warped, or bowed. So Nate sorted the pile while looking for the straightest to use for the top and bottom plates. Today is Saturday and the first big rain since the greenhouse was finished. And I'm sad to say that it leaks in a number of places. Billy had warned us that there would be leaks and he'll be back to fix them in a month or so. Good news is none of the leaks are over the house or the area the carpenters have their work area set up. Even so, I had a great time walking around the house, moving my camp chairs and table around to see how furniture will fit, and generally more puttering around the greenhouse. One of the pleasures of living on a small island is taking a break from construction to walk on the beach. Back on site, Mike and Nate first framed the long north wall. More drilling for more tie down bolts. to the left is a four foot drop. The entry to the crawl space in the foreground is another four foot drop to avoid. Otherwise, this is a rectangle without any windows, so framing and sheathing moved quickly. Nate prepared the wall jacks. I'd never seen these before, but they work great to assist standing up walls that would be too heavy or unwieldy for just two people. Lots of precautions that experienced carpenters take when standing up walls, 
so it's rare for a wall to fall. Still, this was too stressful to watch, so I set the camera and came back after it was up and braced. Today it rained. Not that drizzly stuff. It's raining so hard you can hear it. Matt and I are meeting later today to go over the schedule and other stuff, so I'm setting up the camp chairs and table. Matt's had another project on the other side of the island in the pouring rain. Mike and Nate don't have that problem. Mike is wearing a t-shirt. The greenhouse installers said there were a couple more weeks on the lift rental, so I was surprised when the pickup arrived. I'm glad it's leaving today. This is a skilled driver avoiding framing lumber on one side and roof rafters on the other. Great blue heron casually strolling down the lane. Next up is the tall south wall in the living room. Extra long screws to attach the door header. In addition to four hurricane straps on this wall, the approved plans have extra tie downs that seem a bit excessive and caused a lot of extra work, but we still had to put them in. Nate measured the location to drill the holes in the footer while Mike assembled the wall.
After securing the wall, it was break time. The lap pool was placed here on the north side to make use of space that would otherwise be unusable for growing much. I was pleasantly surprised to discover that as early as March, this space may be lit up by the setting sun. Please like and subscribe and come back next time when Mike and Nate finish the walls.